I am so glad to have all those who joined us in worship. Um, I hopefully you're now going to rejoin us for the message, and uh, we're we're excited about what God is about to do. Um, not only in this place, uh, we're making noise here. Not only in this place, but also around the world. I believe God is today wanting to make a shift in what is happening in this coronavirus. So for you that are not aware, we're in the middle of of having to make some major changes, and they're in the middle of having to get me a different mic, it looks like. Um, But uh, we're, we're having to make some major changes in how we do church and how we do life. And so I'm going to ask a couple staff members to come and to speak into that and to pray. And while they do, we're going to get into the message. I want to tell you that I can see your comments. I may not pay a lot of attention because I have a message to bring you today. But we can see all of your comments. I'd love to see some selfies if you can uh, put them up. Now for all you that are on Facebook, those are the ones I can see right now. Um, Some of you that are on YouTube, uh, we won't be able to see those because we go live both on Facebook and YouTube simultaneously. And obviously those that are on broadcast networks uh, like His Word Broadcasting that's being uh, broadcast live throughout uh, Lane County and the Eugene Springfield area, we're not able to, uh, you're not able to make any comments. So um, Anyway, we can see your comments. We'd love to see a shout out from you during this message. Your best amen is, a, is an amen on the screen, and we'd love to see that from everyone watching today. And I'll probably reiterate that again, but right now we're going to ask a few staff members to pray, and then I'm going to find a different mic. Amen. We were doing our worship practice this morning, and as we were um, just praying, the Lord just showed me that some that, that there's some people... Um, that have never encountered the presence of God in their in their living room or, you know, in these places that we get so used to having our encounter space be in a building like this where we come to encounter God or we come to meet with him. And I just want to encourage you this morning, if you're at home and wherever you are and, and what's going on in your life, in your world, this is a really good time, you know, to, I know it may seem strange to do worship, you know, over a TV screen or a laptop or your phone or whatever, but allow the presence of God, open yourself up and allow God to just meet with you right then and there. Uh, because God's not bound by technology. He's not bound by a screen and he wants to meet with us. And I just want to pray into that. So, Father, I ask God that you would come and you would penetrate, Lord, the deepest places in each and every uh, person's heart. Father, that we cast out fear. We bind fear in the name of Jesus. Lord, I, I ask God that this would be Um, some of the times of the greatest intimacy that they've ever encountered with you. Lord, as they slow down and as they they, uh, have to be, Lord, with their thoughts and they have to be, Lord, uh, you know, a quarantine and not around, Lord, the safety of, of necessarily a crowd of people to hide behind. Father, I ask that you would speak to your church. Lord, that you would speak to your people, and Lord, that you would begin to draw people to you. Father, that your word says, Lord, God, all things work together for those who, are, uh, who love you and are called according to your purposes. And so, Father, we thank you that you're using even this. Lord, that you're going to use this for your kingdom and your purposes. Lord, you're going to shift and change what the enemy intended for destruction, and you're going to use it for your kingdom and your purposes. And, Father, I ask, Lord, that you would draw people unto you, Father, that they would come home. Lord, that they would desire to be in right relationship with you, God. And, and Lord, that when things crumble, Lord, that they would run to you and not from you. And, God, we just declare and decree over each and every person, Lord, a hedge about them. Father, I ask, Lord, that you would put a hedge about, Lord, their doorways, Lord, their property. Father, as they use wisdom, God, I ask, Lord, that you would give protection, Lord, that Lord, that we can't protect ourselves, but you are our protection. You are our source. And so, Father, we ask, God, that you would be the ultimate protection, Lord, that you would guard and watch over your people. And, Father, that uh, no disease, Lord, uh, would come near them and would come near their houses. Father, we love you, and we declare, Lord, your very best in this season. And, Lord, we ask, God, that it would, it would pass by quickly. And, Father, that we would be able to come back to normal life. But, God, that we, this would never, uh, we would never allow the changes and the things that have happened in us in this season to, to go unnoticed. But, Lord, that we would recognize the things and the things that you call us to. Lord, the things that you draw us to, the changes you make in us, Lord, let them be the things that last. And we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Jesus, we just thank you so much that you are a rock and our firm foundation. Lord, I thank you for the fact that you, we sang a song today about how every weapon formed against us shall not prosper. We, God, we thank you for the fact that even right now, right now you're sending angels all around the world to bring comfort to those. Lord, we thank you for the fact that right now that the church, the body of Christ, is stepping up and standing out, coming together in unity as the body of Christ to push back the darkness. Lord, and we come together in unity and we say, no more. It is finished. It is done. God, we thank you for the fact that you are a good God, a good Father, one that loves to give good gifts of freedom, of abundance, of truth, and of wisdom. So, Lord, today, thank you so much for the fact that we have the ability to come together right now. That, Lord, that we may not be together physically in person, but, Lord, that we are bound together by the unity of the Spirit. So, God, I pray that even though there might be one faith, one baptism, one hope, and that hope is found in Jesus, that, Lord, that we would remember to speak, declare, and proclaim your goodness, your authority, and your power over the earth. God, you are so good. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Josh. Hey, we want to uh, just encourage you to um, continue with uh, your tithes and offerings as, uh, as you are able to do that. We have people from uh, all over the world tuning in this morning, and we're delighted with that. Uh, we are continuing uh, our assistance programs, our, our feeding, uh, we were feeding individuals this morning, both hot meals and um, our boxed meals throughout the week, and uh, continuing everything that we can continue to do and also abide by um, the instructions that we're receiving from our leaders, uh, from our national leaders and our state leaders, and we want to abide by that and, and be good stewards of what God has entrusted to us. But we have the opportunity to uh, see God do something miraculous, even in the area of finances. I know many of you, many of us, uh, are uh, affected financially, especially with the unknown of what's going to be happening over the next few weeks, our jobs, and uh, so on and so forth. And so we want to allow God space uh, to move on our behalf. And so there's a different ways that you can give. You can give online. Uh, tithes and offerings, you can give online. Uh, you can send it uh, into the mail. Um, if you need to make arrangements through email or by telephone, uh, just call, and we can uh, help you to be able to, to give and uh, be encouraged with that and believe God that uh, the good seed of the word is going to be sown. And the, and the things that God has entrusted to us, we're going to be good stewards of what God has entrusted to us. And we will see God do uh, amazing things in our hearts and lives. I believe that. Uh, we have a, a little bit of a uh, uh, contributor mentality uh, rather than a tithing and um, stewardship mentality. Contributor means, hey, if I go to the movies, it costs me 20 bucks or whatever. You know, if, I, if, we, uh, if we do this, you know, I throw in. And, uh, but uh, a steward is more about the master's business. And so, so we want to be good stewards of what God has entrusted to us during this time. And God, he, he remains faithful. He remains faithful. He will provide Jehovah Jireh. Our Lord provides. And he is, he is our source. That's what the psalmist prayed. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And he is our provision this morning as well. So we want to encourage you with that. And uh, I just believe that God is uh, ministering his grace to our hearts and lives today. Just want to encourage you to engage. If you have the ability, you know, with your Bible or your uh, smartphone or whatever, as, as Pastor Aaron brings forth the word, um, take notes, engage your heart, because Faith, it, the scripture says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Two dynamics, faith by hearing, whether we're singing the word, whether we are reading the word, listening to the word, or whether we are under the anointed ministry of the preaching of the word, it causes 
faith. Another word for faith is trust, confidence, assurance, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. And the other place that scripture talks about faith being increased is in the book of Jude. Uh, being increased on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Spirit. So I want to encourage you with those things. And uh, let's just, let's just uh, again, just open our hearts to the word of God right now. Father, um, the Apostle Paul declared that your word is not bound. He was in prison, but your word not only went forth, but has been echoing for thousands of years. And so, Lord, today we grab hold of the great grace and the great anointing of your word. Father, let it, let it find deep roots and good soil in our hearts. Father, may your joy be released as we sit together around your table, as we partake the word of God together. In Jesus' mighty name, everyone said amen. Amen. Pastor Aaron. <clears throat> amen. Amen. A couple uh, quick things, then we're going to get right into the message today. Thank you all that are watching. See all those amens on there and all the different ones uh, from all over the world and those that are watching also on YouTube and the different ways you can watch like on our website. Uh, I have to say, if you would like the notes from today's page, um, or today's message, you'd like the notes, I don't know why I said page. If you'd like the notes from today's message, I want to encourage you, you can go to our website at mycrossfire.com and download them right now. They're printable. You can print them both now or later. Um, boy, when I look up at the back screen, I, I see Sarah, and Sarah, I wish you were here. Casey, I'm glad you're not because you're not feeling well. Uh, Gordon, Shirley, thank you so much for your faithful call this morning and those that are supporting. Janice, boy, it just goes on. Gary, I'm glad Gary's not here either. He's not feeling well. And in the name of Jesus, we listen to this message and let it bring healing to your bodies and healing to our society. I, I'm so excited. If you have not uh, yet called your friends, texted them, emailed them, Facebooked them, shared this message. I want to encourage you to do it because it is full of the Word of God that brings life. Not in my face and not at my door. I was going to be into a series in Hebrews. I am so, so, so excited to get back to this series, but God is not letting me do that. Although this message probably could have been part of the Echo series in Hebrews, um, this is a standalone message that I feel like ministers to our moment and to our time. And I believe God is actively involved in this. Not in my face, not in my door. God is at my heart. That's really the, the message today. And so if you would turn to Exodus chapter 12, we're going to be in Exodus. We're going to be in Ephesians, where we're going to be in Deuteronomy, and we're going to see what God will do and how He has echoed and declared His glory throughout all of the nations. Amen. And He is continuing to do that today. And as Monty said during worship, He said that um, it is so important to realize that the spiritual, the things that have, of the Spirit, are greater than what we touch, taste, seal, see, and feel. Um, it, it, is, it is so true. And today, in this day of coronavirus and horrible news and all these things, I want to speak to you today from this, from this vantage point that the Word of God goes forth and takes those scientific facts and brings life and healing to a disease, to a broken heart, to those that are hurting, those that feel lonely. I want to encourage you right now that God's Word is about to bring healing. It is a balm of healing. He didn't die just for our salvation. He died for our healing. He died for our protection. He died for our provision. And we're going to see that Jesus is at the door. Exodus chapter 12 verse 5. Most of you know where this is. I'm going to skip through some of it. You can read it at home. All of this scripture, I believe, and would encourage you to read. It's all on the notes, and so I encourage you to go and see all the references. I appreciate uh, Susan putting it up there. Exodus 12. Keep them, keep them up, especially if I 
I miss a verse or two, um, but I want to see everyone comment as much as you possibly can, and let's encourage one another, just like you were right here saying amen. I do have a special guest here today, my Marlene, my amener. She's here with us in the, uh, in the back because I can't preach without her and my wife. It takes the two of them to make it work. Um, the rest of you are very vital, just saying, but I can't preach without those two, so it takes those two. Um, it used to take my mama. We somehow through faith got past that and or through that. Uh, but I, I think her spirit, uh, still is, is here encouraging me from heaven. Exodus chapter 12, your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Now, do you know what he's about to talk about here? That are those that are watching, uh, Chuck just put up how you can link to the notes. The, he's about to, God is taking the children of Israel out of bondage, where there is sickness and disease. And I'll be honest with you, God is increasing those plagues. Not decreasing them. We want the coronavirus to go away. And you know what? I think we have every right to pray and believe that. The children of Israel didn't want those plagues. The Egyptians didn't want those plagues. But I want to tell you something. When God shows up, there is going to be those that will say, I choose you, and things become peaceful. And there's going to be those that resist God and things get difficult. That's just the nature of a holy God in the presence of unholy people. That's why we take on His holiness and His righteousness because the peace of God can flow. Now one, I just got to say that we get comments once in a while that they feel like I'm always yelling at you. I'm sorry. I just get just a little excited about the Word of God. So if you don't like that, I'm, I'm, I apologize now, but I may sound like I yell a lot. I probably do, but, um, <laughs> but I'm excited about what this Word is here today. And so the children of Israel, this is what the admonition is to them as they're coming out of sickness, disease, and bondage. And the judgment of God in the land that they're in into a land of promise. That's where God's wanting to take them. That's where God's wanting to take us. Some say, well, this is, the, this is a sign of the end times. Praise Jesus! then let's get busy winning people to Christ if this is a sign of the end times. He says, take this lamb, verse 6 of Exodus 12, now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month, then the whole assembly and a congregation shall kill it at twilight. And they shall take some of the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel and shall kill it at twilight and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the doorpost and lintel of their houses where they eat. Today I want to tell you that there is sickness and disease. As Psalm 91 says, it shouldn't come near our door. And they were instructed by God to take the sacrifice and place it on the two doorposts and above the doorpost. And folks, I want to tell you, we're going to, get, we're going to get into this a little bit. I want to tell you, that is the admonition. That is how I, I started calling people in our church. My list was 200 that I had to call from our church. And I began to say, well, I actually, I got to pick the first 200. And I picked 200 people to start calling. And, and I prayed with them. I've still got another hundred to go, so I'm only halfway through. And the church staff has begun praying for some. And, and let me just tell you that as I began to call them, I began to pray, and God began to lead me how to pray. And that was that the blood of Christ would be on their doorpost and that, and that the enemy and this sickness and this disease has to pass over us. Why? Because Jesus did not come only for our salvation. It is our salvation eternally, but it is also our salvation right here on earth right now. 
And he's, that salvation includes pr- prosperity. It includes God providing for us. It includes our health and our protection from sickness and disease. It, it, it is also our healing. And so the blood of Christ over our door. Now we know that this is just a life and soon it will be gone and we have eternity to look forward to. But in this life, let us be good stewards of God's life that he's put within us. His spirit, his power, and his authority that he's put within us. Let us be good stewards with that. And here the children of Israel, the promise of God is in bondage in Egypt. And God says, listen, I'm going to make a way that no matter how bad it gets in this land, you're going to be protected and you're going to be delivered. And I want to speak that over you right now, that God is wanting for every single one that would choose him. If you've got notes and you're watching and you've downloaded those notes, number one, Jesus is at the door. Death is and life is at your door. We're seeing it played out as a physical prophecy right now with sickness and disease at our door. And we're told to stay in our doors, right? That's the next order, probably this week. Stay in your doors. But I want to tell you, you choose. You choose whether that death angel comes into your house or not do you have to be wise yes should you be wise yes should you listen to governmental authorities the bible declares yes you should and we are and we're abiding by those guidelines pushing them yes but guiding you know definitely abiding by them it's hard when someone passes away and you can't be there with the family as a pastor that's that's hard When someone's in the hospital sick, that's hard. When someone's having a baby, that's hard. When someone has committed suicide, that's hard to not be able to be there and go there and be there with the family. That rips my heart out as a pastor. But I want to tell you that this is what God is saying to us. Now, how are they to be in their house? And this is what I want you to to understand. How are they to be in their house? They They were to be in their house very specifically. Verse 11 says, And you shall eat the lamb that's been sacrificed, that you put the blood on the doorpost, with a belt around your waist, sandals on your feet, and a staff in your hand. I don't know about you, but doesn't that sound a little bit like they're ready for deliverance? Doesn't that sound a little reminiscent to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, about spiritual warfare, that we don't fight that what we see here on this earth, they weren't fighting a Pharaoh. They weren't fighting Egypt. They were fighting a spirit in the land. We are not fighting any person. We are fighting a spirit in the land. Right now, you at your door are fighting a spirit in the land. In your face, there is a spirit in the land. And you are fighting a spirit in in the land and they were fighting the evil spirit in the land and god was delivering them out of bondage i believe god is delivering us out of bondage but we're going to have to understand what spiritual warfare is and then we're going to have to enter into it and today we're going to touch on what that means for you to enter into spiritual warfare this morning right now for a fight that is in our face and at our door Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to go there in just a few minutes, but I believe that when he said that they need to have their belt on, their sandals on, and and their, their staff in their hand, he was saying, get ready for deliverance from what? Spiritual bondage. And I want to speak to you that are watching today, get ready for deliverance from spiritual bondage, from sickness and disease, get ready for deliverance in the name of Jesus, because you need to choose you this day for you and your household you choose who you're going to trust in you choose what you're going to believe you speak the truth of god over the lies and threats of the enemy over the roaring of the lion the children of israel it goes on and i encourage you to read this whole thing he says get the leaven out of your house 
We are in a time where we're at home now, aren't we? Many of us are home more than we've ever been. I've been, I've been at home more than I've ever been at home. I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to go do one of the most godly things on the planet when I get home. Are you ready? For two years, I've had a basketball hoop sitting, laying down and not, not put up. And my son looked at me and said, Daddy, could we put that basketball hoop up since you're home so much? Guess what? I'm going to go home, we're going to dig a hole, and we're putting us ourselves up a basketball hoop on probably the smallest piece of concrete you've ever seen in your life that you could play basketball on, but we're going to do it. But I want to tell you, you're home a lot right now. One of the things they had to do is clean out their house. You say, oh, that's what we're doing. We're, we're doing spring cleaning. No, no, no. They had to clean all the leaven out of their house. You know what that means? You need to take some inventory of what you're watching, what you're saying, what you're doing. I texted one of our members. They didn't have my number in their phone. I said, I'm your drug dealer. Before I could get the text out saying, saying, I deal Jesus, the love of Jesus, and it's very addictive. And before I could get that out, I got a text back saying, thank God, I need you now more than ever. Yeah. So we had some counseling with social distancing. Folks, it's time we get some leaven cleaned out of our homes, cleaned out of our minds, cleaned out of our lives. And so if you skip down with me to 12:28 it says then the children of Israel went away and did so just as the Lord commanded they did it. See when God was ready to bring deliverance they really only had to do one thing. Do you know what it was? One thing. And you know what today if we want to find deliverance and protection over the coronavirus, if we want to find protection and deliverance in our lives over drugs and alcohol, if we want to find the peace of God and the love of God, there's only one thing we got to do. You know what it is? Whatever Jesus says. It's just one thing. Do what he says. The Bible's big. Folks, I want to tell you something. If you want to find peace and joy and love, I find in my life when I have troubles, it's because I'm not doing what he says. It doesn't mean it's always easy. But I can walk through the greatest storms. I can walk on water when I do what he says. But when I find reasons and justifications to not do what he says... It's always a difficult way. It says the way of the transgressor is difficult. It is hard. Number two in our notes, Jesus is at the door. He's in your face. And he's at your heart. Jesus is at the door. He's in your face. He's at your heart. What do I mean by that? Read this cool scripture. I'm going to tell you some history that is going to cause you to hear an echo into the new covenant. What's at the door today? What's at your door today? Jesus is at the door. What should be over your doorpost? The blood of Christ that causes the death angel to have to pass over. It has to pass over. He can't can't stop. The, The justice of God is met with the mercy of God. When we deserve the justice of God, we get the mercy of God. And when we walk in the mercy of God, meaning that we're not trying to do it ourselves, we're saying, God, without your help, I can do nothing. We find the grace of God. And if you understood that, it's it's part of this series in Hebrews. When we understand that when we begin to operate in the mercy of God, the things that, that we should be judged for, we're not. And the mercy of God comes upon As soon as we begin to receive that, we begin to be able to walk in the grace of God, the supernatural enabling power of God that we can overcome. Why is that? Because the blood of Jesus has been presented before the throne on behalf of everyone that would confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. And every one of us who have done that 
we have the protection of God. Not just in this life, but also in eternity. Deuteronomy 6, 4. There's a little thing when I was in, e- in Israel this last year that every time you walk into the house, every time you come into a gate, every time you go into a doorway in Israel, you see a, a mezuzah. They're, they're at the right hand side and you'll see many of them will kiss them or they'll touch them. I'm not sure what they're doing today because there's not as many people going in houses because they're kind of in lockdown there. But they will touch those, they will kiss those, they will, and, and they're scriptures. And I want you to see this. This is the scripture that is in that mezuzah. Now they, they do it because this is what they call the hedge of protection. This is the hedge of protection around their home. You, you say, well, what does that have to do with me? I want to tell you something. They have got stuck on a a physical manifestation of obedience, but it is an echo of spiritual manifestation of obedience. And it is scriptural. Here's where they get it from. Now the commandment, this is Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. We're going to mainly go to 4, but let's start in 1. It says, now this is the command, and these are the statutes and judgments of the Lord your God has commanded you to teach you. He wants to teach you. Learn, live, and give the gospel together. God is wanting to teach you. He uses pastors and preachers and teachers, but most of all, He uses His Spirit to teach you and His Word. That you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess. That you may fear the Lord your God to keep all His statutes and commands which I command you and your sons and your grandsons all the days of your life that your days may be prolonged. Folks, when we're obedient to the Word of God, when we're obedient to what God says, our days are prolonged. Therefore, hear Israel, be careful to observe it that you may be well with you, that you may greatly multiply as the Lord, your, the Lord God of your fathers has promised you. A land flowing with milk and honey. He's saying there's promises out there. When we walk in obedience, we walk into them. When we don't, it's delayed. I want you to hear that. When you follow after the things of the Holy Spirit, when you follow after the things of God, when you're led by His Spirit, you walk into the things of promise and you enjoy them. When you're disobedient, you wander around until you learn to trust Him. We we had a whole series on that. Then he says in verse 4, this is where the scripture that's in there, Hear, O Israel, the one true and living God, He alone. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you these days shall be in your heart. In your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. Talk about them when you sit in your house. Can I tell you, it's time to clean out your house. It's time to teach your children. It's time to teach your children. This is a good opportunity. I know that we probably need prayer because husbands and wives that that are not getting along are having to stay in the house together. Now that seems funny, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I'm afraid of the rise in abuse. But this can be a time of healing if we'll apply the Word of God. This can be a time of life and not arguing and fighting if we'll listen to the Word of God. I'm I'm afraid for mothers losing their minds. My wife looks at me and just says, I have to find somewhere quiet in this house. Now understand, there's 11 people with us. And she'll just go lock herself in the room for 15, 20 minutes, get herself together, Come back out, no children are dead, and we have a good day again. You know, when you're the one responsible for these kids, I I think I can get some amens from some mamas. I got some mamas amen in right now. Sarah's like, amen! Preach that, brother! Gordon is too, but he doesn't have a child. He's just got a wife. Who is awesome. You ought to be lucky, Gordon. So... 
But let me just say to you that there is in our house, this is a time to teach our children about God. This is why some of you have your children. At my home, I'm not there, but my home, they're gathered in the living room right now, watching it on YouTube, having church in the living room right now. We're forcing them, they're tied, but you know, they're down there. Listen, what he goes on to say. You teach these things that you would observe them, that they would be in your heart. He says you teach them when you sit in your home, when you walk by the way, six feet away from people, when you lie down, six feet away from people, when you rise up, six feet away from people. Now listen to this. I want you to understand what these words mean. He says you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes and you will write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates now listen i'm going to tell you what this means and then we're going to go and 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 close this message with some declarations greater than what i'm going to tell you about the jewish people which i love i want to state that i love dearly 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 so i'm not being critical of them the mezuzah is a thing at their gate a physical thing because see folks they need a physical touch not really realizing that the supernatural supersedes the natural and that what we need is a prayer life and spiritual warfare not just a trinket so they have a mezuzah put at an angle at their gates and their doors and it has this scripture on it and many of them have the letter shin on it Shin is, looks like a W. Okay? Shin looks like a W. You know what it means? God Almighty or Almighty God. He is one. I got to tell you something I think is hilarious though. Shin, which is the 300th letter in the dictionary. It represents, and not 300th. It's, it's a letter in the dictionary that represented by the number 300. Okay? It looks like a W. Now here's what's so crazy about that. I want you to look at the Trinity. One letter, Almighty God. Three. And I want to tell you, Christians, you've made, you've made God into three gods. He's not three God. He's one God. We serve one God alone, one true God, one living God. It's just one. But He's in three parts just like i'm body soul and spirit i've got three parts so does god three parts he's got the the father the son and the holy spirit he manifests himself as his word he manifests himself in the spirit and we don't go to anyone other than god and when you can call him out as jesus yahweh elohim adonai you can call him out as his attributes to declare who he is so this shin is on many of those most of those It's also on a block, a leather block that they tie to their head. The factor, uh, let me say it right. The feet, the tefen, that's the Hebrew word for it. I can say that better than I can the the, uh, English word. The tefen is two blocks that they tie one to their arm i don't know if they have a picture of it or not Uh, you might be able to get it online they just put it up online i don't think they have it here but the teffen is a block i've only got like three of us here right but um it's a block that they tie to their their forearm it sits on their arm not their hand but then the leather bands go around many of you have seen this and it goes around and it ties down in laces into their hand before they lace it into their hand representing their union their marriage with christ or excuse me with god Um, but we know that jesus came as the husband and that has a lot of significance there before they tie it they also put it on their head and so they've got a block on their forehead and they've got a block on their arm and let me tell you what this is this is a hedge of protection it says this that the word of god is near their heart that's why they tie it to their left arm but that's not it's not only their left arm 
Sometimes they tie it to their right arm because the greater significance than it even being in their heart is for them to realize this, this just gives me goosebumps right now just talking about it. For them to realize that the Word of God has to be on the weaker part. Here's why. Because when you're weak, so if you're right-handed or left-handed, it, it's on your, whichever one is weakest because either one is close to your heart, but the more important part is to realize that when you're weak, He makes you strong. That what you can do in your right hand, you do, but what you are weak and cannot do, and you come short, He makes up the difference. How? With His Word. With His Word. You know what else it means? They tie it to their head, their frontlets. I, I, I pray that I don't get pictures of everybody with these things tied to them. Because that's not what it's about. They also have the shin The Almighty, the Adonai, the Almighty God, the El El Shaddai, the Shaddai is what it means. God, the Mighty One. It's also on this box, but here's what they're saying. Everything that goes into my head and everything that comes out, I need the Word of God right here in front of me. And so they'll go and they'll pray and they tie this to their head. They tie this to their arm and they say, as I present myself before God, I want to make sure that everything coming into my mind and going out of my mind is filtered by the word of God. Folks, if we could learn that lesson, we would change the world. That what is closest to our heart and on our weakest point, he makes us strong. And what is right before our frontlets of our eyes is the Word of God, and every time something goes out, it needs to be filtered by the Word of God. And when it comes in, oh, the news, the corona, we're going to die. That is not the Word of God, folks. You are called to live and to live forever. (laughs) Folks, I know I'm yelling. I'm sorry. It doesn't bother me to preach to TV. It's okay. (laughs) I can preach to one. I get this excited at home at night. <laughs> just telling you, I'll be by myself. I was in my hot tub preaching last night, just all excited about what the God is saying. I was, get, I was just literally like, God, you are so, so stinking amazing. That shin has to do with fire. It represents fire and teeth, a consuming fire. The Holy Spirit consumes those things in your life that you're, you're dealing with. He's, he has the power and the ability to consume and eat up this virus that we're worried about. Your finances that you're worried about. I want to tell you, let me, let me just get cut subject for one second for those that will stick with me. I don't like this virus. I don't think this is a godly good thing. But I'm going to tell you something. God is going to use this for good. He is going to bring around about deliverance. And there are some people that need to understand life is so fragile. And and if they think that God can't bring a plague, and I'm not saying this is from God. I don't believe it's from God. I believe it's from the enemy. But his righteousness requires obedience. It it just requires it. His holiness requires us to fall in line with who he is. And when we deny the nature of God in our society over and over and over and over in our actions, in our thoughts, in our talk, in our TV, in everything that's coming in and out of our mind that is settling in our heart, Folks, I want to tell you, there is no chance that sickness and disease won't explode around the globe. It just can't not happen. But there's a light. And there's a hope. And His name is Jesus. And I hope the scientists find all that they need. And I know that God is the God of all wisdom. And I know He can move upon all people. And I pray that God is leading our government. And I want to see us come out of this thing. But I want to tell you, right behind it is something else. And right behind it is something else. And men are dying every single day. And the time is coming to the end of time where we will meet our Maker, folks. And then where will we be? Hopefully you become a light 
I believe that God is calling each and every one of us to realize it's not in my face. Enemy, don't get in my face because when you get in my face, I'm going to use the Word of God in spiritual authority, in spiritual wisdom. I'm going to use the Word of God and you'll have to back down. That's not to people. That's to a spirit in the land. When you come near me, when you come near my dwelling, I got a mezuzah. It's called Jesus. He is the great word of God. He is the mezuzah. His blood does cover all sin. It does cause the unleavened bread to be cast out of the house. And when you come near my face, there it is. There it is. There's the, there's the block. The teffin. Right here. Right here. It's near my heart. Where? The Word of God. Hidden in my heart. Causing my weak to become strong. It's in my mind. It's filtering what comes out. I call those Christians and they, I hear their foul language. I, I've just gotten about up to here with it. This week, probably for the first time in 30 years, I've just finally just, you know, I'm always like, ah, oh, it's okay, no big deal, you can cuss. I'm just kind of, you know, we're at a serious time. Just knock off your filthy mouth. I've just, this week, I've just been like, you know, we don't have time for your little stupid religious or, or, or non-religious games where you're just speaking filth out of your mouth. You know what you need to speak out of your mouth? The Word of God. You know what you speak out of your mouth? Faith and life and not death. I know I'm just, I'm not, don't mean to be pointing and stuff, okay? He says, therefore, lay up these, these words of mine. This is what's in that teffin. That's, this is what's, what's in that box. He says, therefore, you lay up these words in your heart and in your soul and bind them as a sign in your hand and the frontlets between your eyes. What? The Word of God. The, the Word of God and the declaration that He is God. Exodus 13.9 is another thing that's in that box. There's three scriptures. The one we read in Deuteronomy 6, Deuteronomy 11, and, De- and Exodus uh, 13. And it shall be as a sign unto you upon your hand in the mor- memorial between your eyes that the Lord God, the law out of his mouth with a strong hand has the Lord brought you out of Egypt. In other words, the word of God delivers people. And it shall be a token upon thy hand and the frontlets between your eyes and the strength in your hand. And he's brought you out, folks. Did Jesus respond to this? Did Jesus ever respond to this? The answer is yes, he did. In Matthew 23, 5, you can read the whole context, but I'm going to just give you what he responded to. He, he's talking to the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, and this is what he said. But all your works they do... For, the, for to be seen by men. They make broad those boxes. That's what he's saying right here. They, they make broad these boxes. And, and, and he causes the skirts, the, the prayer shawl, the clothing, they make them big and ornate so that they're widely seen and they're seen but folks this is not about what you see this is about spiritual warfare this is about going from from the word of god in your mouth and at your face so when the enemy approaches your door he has to stop and you raise up a standard against him and you say as for me and my house right out of what joshua said we are going to serve the lord that what does that mean as for me and my house we have the benefits of god we're going to choose you this day whom we're going to serve and we're going to serve god folks you can't make that choice for anyone else but you can make it for you and i you can declare it over your household let's just go to three Number three in our notes, it says, and I only have four, and we're, we're, these are quick, ready? We're in it to win it. Are you in it to win it? Ephesians chapter six says you better be in it to win it. This is where it actually gets good right here. You're in it to win it. We are in a fight to win. 
We are not in a fight to lose. We're not hiding in our homes to lose. We are broadcasting here on television. You're broadcasting on all your social media. Talk about being social. We're more social now than we've ever been. Man, YouTube and 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 Facebook and Instagram and all those other things are blowing up right now. And we're reaching not hundreds, but thousands and tens of thousands with the gospel. Memes and words and encouragement, but also death and discouragement. And so I say to you, fear. But I want to say to you, we're not in it to lose it, folks. We're in this thing to win it. We're in this thing to win it. We, did, we do not live to lose we're living to win we're living to win at times like these we need to stand up and be spiritual warfare and spiritual warriors and if we're going to stand up and be spiritual warriors we need to put on the whole armor of god let's let's look at what that means quickly i'm going to run through it i put it in your notes if you download it it's all right there i'm going to highlight it we're not going to do a major study i just want to highlight it it's time for us to say enemy not at my door and not in my face because i've got jesus in my heart He's at my front door. He's at my face. You ready? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the scheming or wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. What are we talking about here? That the spiritual is greater. This is not a physical scientific disease this is a spiritual attack this is a spiritual attack that manifests itself it manifests itself in a physical thing it manifests itself into a disease but it is a spiritual attack do you remember when satan came on behalf of job and he said I can't preach this. I don't have time, but I just tell you real quick. Do you remember when he came to, to Job and he said, listen, he said, um, the enemy came to God, excuse me, on behalf of Job. And he said, listen, uh, I, I could attack him and he would deny you, but you've put a hedge of protection around him. Do you remember that? But do you remember when, when it came upon him? What, what came upon him? Sickness and disease, his family attacked, Right? But do you remember what Job said? The things I feared the worst. Why? Because faith and fear don't, don't reside in the same place. He was a good man. He was a godly man. He loved God, but there was a problem. He didn't trust God enough. He didn't have faith enough. And you know what? But God knew that when the chips were down, his people, he knew that Job would arise in faith and he would speak the word of God and he would speak life and not death and he would live and not die. And folks, that's exactly what happened to Job. why because it was around his home and it was in his heart and it was in his mind and although he went through difficulty he came out on the other side and the enemy had to pay him double i want to tell you our church is financially i had to lay everybody off including myself which wasn't a difficult thing really um (laughs) you got to get paid for that to matter but but we laid everybody off and i got to tell you a little secret about that the enemy's going to have to pay double. It's, it's, it's going to be bad for a while, and it's going to get better than it's ever been. I want to tell you, I don't care about the stock market at all. I ain't got money, to, I don't have no money to invest. But I want to tell you something. I believe that it'll be better than ever, at least for believers. I believe for believers, it's going to be better than ever. Why? Because when we win, and we're in it to win it, when we win, and when the enemy has to get out of our face, and when he has to back off of our door, I want to tell you something, when we win it, he's going to have to pay double back. Everything we lost, and double that. Why? Because that's a biblical principle. All right, back to this. Quickly, I I want you to repeat some things after me. Verse 13, therefore... Because we have spiritual darkness that we're coming against, okay? This is what he says. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you'll be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. 
When, having done all to stand, when you've just done it, do it. Did you hear me? When, you've, when it's done, just do it. When it's done, just do it. He says, when you've done all to stand, when you've done everything with your strong arm that you can do, then guess what? God's going to take your weak arm and He's going to strengthen it with supernatural power. And whatever you could, when, it, when you stood with the one, with a little bit of effort you had, He said, I'm going to take and be your strength. I'm going to be your shield. I'm going to be your sword. I'm going to be your helmet. Sorry, I'm yelling. He says, when you've done all today, and stand therefore, and this is how you stand. You ready? Having gird your waist with truth. What does that mean? Speak truth. Folks, spiritual warfare is praying. Praying not sometimes. Praying without ceasing. I want to tell you, they put that block on their head and they put that block on their arm. They do that. Why? Well, when they go pray. Can I tell you that God didn't say do it when you pray? He says do it all the time. It isn't because you need a physical block there. It's because you need the Spirit, the Word of God tied around your head right before your eyes that every time with everything you see, with everything you say, with everything you do, it's filtered by the Word. And everything that comes in and everything that goes out, it's filtered by the Word. And the Word of God is hidden in your heart. That's not a physical thing. That's a spiritual thing. And it is a spiritual warfare thing. Oh. So it's time we realize it's not the news. We speak truth in faith that overcomes the physical facts because of the spiritual power of truth. What God says is what is. What God spoke created the universe, and what God says will defy every disease, every fact, everything that is said, every scientific thing. I'm not a scientific denier. I am proven, and I've seen proven over and over and over. Science actually proves God if you're not blind to it. And then he says, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, that means rely on God's righteousness, not your own. It protects your vital organs. Your righteousness is not enough, but when you meet, his, when you meet God with mercy, you take on his righteousness and his holiness and you get to operate in grace. That's the supernatural enabling power of God. Number 15, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, what does that mean? Walk, be led by the Spirit, and you'll walk in peace. Walk by the Word. Walk by the Spirit. Walk being led by the Holy Spirit and in the Word of God, and you will find peace, period. You'll walk in peace, and you'll bring peace everywhere you go. Number 16, above all, take the shield of faith, which is able to quench every fiery dart of the enemy. Extinguish every word of death that comes in with truth. Did you hear me? Rise up a standard that every time you hear death and disease and, and panic and fear, you meet it with faith. Extinguish it with faith, folks. And take the helmet of salvation. Guard and equip your mind by renewing your mind with God's Word. Protecting your mind with God's Word. And the sword of the Spirit, take an offensive position in the Word of God, folks. Don't take a defensive position. You know what? We've already taken the defensive with all of the armament. He's the hedge of protection. It's time to start increasing the tent. It's time to start taking ground. You know, this week, they're, they're, they're saying that our governor will shut us down. That's what they're saying, that the governor's going to shut us down this week. And if she does, she does. And we'll, I may be doing this from here, I may be doing this from home, but I want to tell you something. If she does, she does. If not, next week, we're going to have drive-in church. Why? Because we're going to have, we're going to do everything we possibly can to get the word out and to fellowship safely that we can. But you know what? You say, well, if you're going to go to all this work, and then what if, what if it doesn't happen that way? Well, then it'll happen the next week, or the next week, or the next week, or when this whole thing's over, we'll have a tailgate party here at the church. I think that's a great idea, you know? But here's the deal, folks. What are we going to do? I'm going to make plans for victory. I'm going to take an offensive position. I've got, I've got my shoes on. I've got my sword in my hand. I'm ready to push forward. 
I'm ready to win. And I'm going to start by doing that in prayer. I'm going to start by doing that in speaking life. And then he says, pray always, always being in prayer. Keep your head up and your eyes open. He says, be watchful. With all perseverance, keep others and prayer in, in their concern. Be concerned about them. 3J is let's declare God's will to be done because you're an ambassador. As Paul said, in chains, pray for me that the word of God cannot be chained and I will not be changed. Chained. I'll be changed, but not chained. Number four, last, last thing is this. Do you have a word of declaration from God? Did you hear me? Do you have a, a word of declaration, a sword? Do you have a, a word of protection over your face? When the enemy comes to your door, do you have a word for him? Or does he bring fear and strike fear? When the enemy comes to your door, does it strike fear in you? Are you afraid of the coronavirus? I want to tell you something. I respect what we have to do, but I am not afraid. I refuse to be in fear. I have a word for the coronavirus. Die in the name of Jesus and be ended and let us find a, a solution long term for this. I have a word for it. By his stripes, I am healed, protected, and provided for in the name of Jesus. I want to tell you, do you have a word of declaration? I'll try to do this without getting excited, but that will not happen. Here's how we're going to end it. I want some declarations. I want some declarations. Maybe we can just do it without someone repeating. In fact, here's what I'd like you to do. If there's still a few people watching on YouTube, maybe you can declare this. Just say, I declare it. So after I say it, I want you to say, I declare it. If you're watching on Facebook, I just want you to write, I declare it. Let's practice a second. Say, I declare it on Facebook. Are you ready to declare? Say, I have a declaration. If you don't know how to spell declaration, just put D, okay? We'll know what you mean. But if you have a declaration, let's put out our de declaration. Are you ready? Psalms 91, verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the, under the shadow of the shin. The shin? No, no. The shin. The shin. Did you hear me? Listen to this. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Word of God, of the shin, of the fullness of the Godhead. And I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My, my God, in Him will I trust. Folks, I want to tell you my declaration. You tell me if it's your declaration. Here's my declaration from that verse. He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Can you say, in Him will I trust? That's my declaration. Danny, is that your declaration? Troy, is that your declaration? Shauna, that's your declaration. Shirley, that's your declaration. Brooke, that's your declaration. Christy, my wife, Angel, that's your declaration. Jandis, keep de declaring it over and over and over. It's mine and Marlene's declaration too. Then he says, surely I will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. If you don't know Psalms 91, you ought to read it every day that we're under any kind of quarantine. Linda, Lana, Colleen, Danny Ely, all of them keep declaring it. Now are you ready? Here it is. Surely... He has delivered you from the snare of the fowler, the trap, the one that encages, and from the, um, the perilous pestilence. We got some perilous pestilence going on. That's a good Bible thing, isn't it? Some parallel, parallel, some perilous pestilence. You ready for the declaration? He is my deliverer from any trap or disease or bondage, any virus. He is my deliverer. Is that your declaration? He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. He is my true. This is my declaration. He is my true safe space. He is my true safe place. There, there are all the millennials looking for a safe place. There it is. He's my safe place. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler, your big shield and your little fighting shield, your, your shield that goes to war, your, your shield, your big one and your little one. He, he's both. 
Declaration, God's truth protects me as a shield. Is that a declaration? Is that a declaration you need? The protection of God? The hedge of protection around you? Verse 5, you shall not be afraid by the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. What's your declaration? I will not fear. Not day or night. I don't. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to live in faith. That's my declaration. What's yours? Nor by the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste by noon. A thousand will fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Battles, viruses all around, yet they can't come to my door. Problems all around, storms all around, and yet I live in peace. That's my declaration. What's yours? Only with your eyes you shall look and see the rewarder of the wicked, because you have made the Lord who is your refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. And I encourage you to go back and really look and study what that means. But he says this, I will see through eyes of faith where I truly am and be obedient with what I see, not in the physical, but in the spiritual realm. I'll see what's really, who's really being rewarded. I'll see what is really happening in God. And it will, it will manifest itself in the physical. Here we go. Verse 10. No evil shall befall you. No plague shall come near your dwelling. What's your declaration from that scripture? I am safe in Christ. My household is safe in Christ. Satan, step back. Do not trespass. Do not get in my face. It's not in my face and you're not in my door because I've got the Word of God protecting me. I've got Almighty. I've got the supernatural overcoming the natural and the virus and the issues. I declare it in the name of Jesus. It's time you get some declarations and get them in your mouth and start speaking them back. And let's get that devil to have to push back a little, church. Church, let's get the devil to push back some, okay? Let's start speaking our declaration and make him push back. I would tell you, you probably ought to get busy and I'll just go, but there's a few more declarations and let me just tell you, you ain't got nowhere to go. Ready? For he will give you his angels charge over you and keep you in all your ways in their hands. They shall bear you up. Remember, this is what was quoted against Jesus by Satan. Because Satan takes the word of God and twists it. Lest you dash your foot against a stone. And this is what I want to say is all heaven stands ready to protect me, to hold me, to guard me, and to fight for me. That's my declaration. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample them under the feet. I have authority in the name of Jesus and by the blood of the Lamb. I have authority. Amen. Verse 14, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will exalt him on high because he has known my name. Declaration, I love him. He delivers me. I know him and he lifts me up. That's my declaration. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. When I call, I know that my God hears. Whether I see it in the physical, I know it in the spiritual. Things are already at work. This virus is already dead because of the blood of Jesus. Now we need it manifested into our life as we walk in obedience to God. That's my declaration. I know I'm overwhelming you just a little bit, but we're almost done. Three more. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. When I call on him, he hears me. Ready? With length of days, long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Declaration. In Jesus, I have long life. In him, I have eternal salvation. And it starts now. You ready? Here's the last one. It's Joshua 24, 15. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, if you think that it's all for nothing and you think it's ridiculous, if you think it's evil to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the God of your fathers that did you no good 
or the God of your fathers that served God and it brought you health and peace? Because I don't know what your fathers did. But when he's talking about this, he's talking about Abraham and Isaac and Jacob who served a true and living God. If your father served a true and living God, then maybe you ought to look at that. Or is it those that you're looking at in this land and in this, this, this world that we live in? He says, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. My declaration is as for me and my house, as for me and this church, we're going to serve the Lord. In conclusion, the declaration is this. Not in my face and not in my door. Jesus is at the door, the scripture says, in Revelation, is it chapter 3, says Jesus is at the door and he's knocking. And for you that are watching by television, I want to ask if you are here today, the people that are commenting on the screen, many of them know Christ, they, they believe in Christ, they love Jesus. For you that are, are watching that do not, maybe you haven't said a thing, you're just concerned, maybe you're Maybe you're scared. Maybe, maybe you're living in fear. Maybe you're just saying blindly living in this world and saying, I don't care, but God cares for you. And if you're watching right now and you say, I need Jesus in my life. I need to have a declaration. I need his word at the front of my head and I need his word in my heart and I need his spirit to lead me and guide me and to protect me. I need Jesus right now. This is a beautiful time to reach out. There's phone number that I'm gonna give you. It's, in fact, I'm gonna ask somebody to put it up on the screen. Uh, for his 541-686-3473. Charles, maybe you can put that up too. 541 541- 686-3473. If you'd like to come to know Christ right now, I'm going to ask you to call that number. There's people who would love to pray with you. They would love to, to talk with you and they'd love to lead you to Christ. There is a protection spiritually that is manifested into the physical, into this coronavirus, into where we're living. And we need to begin to declare the word of God over those things, the great and amazing word of God. We have the ability to win. I want you to win with us. As as the body of Christ, as believers, if you would simply ask Christ into your heart, you, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to do it all right. You don't have to get all these formulas. It's really one thing. Jesus, I need you. Would you come into my heart? I'm going to ask you that would to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I need you. I've tried this on my own with my strong arm, but it seems like my weaknesses outweigh my strength. I need you to be strong when I'm weak. I believe that you died on the cross for me and I ask that the blood of Christ would be shed over my doorpost that I could start living for you and receiving your protection and your salvation and your love. I need you in my heart, Jesus. I need you in my life. I believe that you died for me but that you rose again And you're sitting at the right hand of God the Father and you're working things together for good for me because you love me. Let me receive that by choosing you and walking in your ways by your grace. Those are big words. But Lord, I ask you into my heart Lead me and guide me. Help me walk in fellowship with believers as the body of Christ walks as one. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer or you know you should have, 
I'm going to encourage you to call the number at the bottom of the screen or email or write us. You that are watching, <clears throat> um, I'm going to encourage you to send your email uh, in, not, not here on Facebook or on YouTube, but at our website, because we're going to keep you abreast. We're looking at doing a drive-in church where you can drive it in your car. We're looking at uh, Bible studies for the women, the men, the children, the youth. Those will all be coming on Facebook and YouTube, but but they'll also be made available at our website. And if you give us your email a couple times a week, you'll get a notification of when new things are up. So I want to encourage you to do so. Most of all, if you were moved by this message today, I'm going to ask if you would just to contact us. Let's stay together as the body of Christ. Let's, let's walk through this and let's show forth the light of the gospel of Jesus as we never have before. Thanks again for watching and thank all of you who are watching in all the various ways you can and some who will be watching this next week on the broadcast television once this is edited. But we are still the body of Christ. Reach out to our church if you need food. Please immediately contact our website or call our number. Give a little time because right now they're getting spiritual food. Um, but if you need physical food, we're going to help you. We're going to do our very best, especially for seniors and disabled. We've delivered all this week. We're going to keep delivering. We want to make sure that that gets out to you. Thank you for watching. God is good all the time. And so let's walk in the goodness of God. Thank you. Money. This is my Crossfire story. World Outreach Ministries is supported by faithful monthly contributions from viewers like you. Please take time today and make your tax-deductible gift to Crossfire World Outreach Ministries, 942 28th Street, Springfield, Oregon, 97477, 541-686-3473, or find us on the web at mycrossfire.com.